I am currently around the 1500 day count in my Skywalk world, and I have a massive problem with this world. Yup, I have not touched the end at all. And this is just unacceptable. I transformed the end into the deep dark and Minecraft hardcore. We built the most epic end hub in survival Minecraft. I turned the end into the ultimate city. And then you have me. I didn't touch the end because I'm a lazy prick in hardcore Minecraft. So let's fix that. First things first, what am I going to build? It's a question I asked myself and many people, but I quickly stopped asking because the ideas I would get were violating the Geneva suggestions, so I settled with copying a plan from one of my childhood games. Super Mario Galaxy! If you couldn't tell, I really like this game. And one of the more recognizable plans from this game is this one, filled with a lot of bees. Um... But uh, for some reason, I prefer going with the alternate autumn version. Obviously, before being able to build this monstrosity, I need to make some space. And it first starts with... Mining these big obsidian pillars. Well... That took f ages. By the way, if you wanna know how many obsidian that got me, it's just a little bit of this, and a little bit of that, with a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a couple, a couple stacks, just, you know, just like days of my life wasted. <laughs> mm -hmm. By the way, funny story, last episode, I destroyed my bow by accident, and it happened exactly like this. Um. So yeah, now I don't have a bow anymore, and to be honest, I don't really care. It's not like I need to shoot a lot of things. Now the second step is to not mine the end blocks by hand, but instead use this machine I built in this episode and gather all the clay I need for this build. So I just need to walk through the end until I find my machine. I think I placed it over there, or uh, maybe over here. Where is it? <clears throat> We seem to have a problem. The machine's gone. It could have just possibly gone away by itself, and last time I checked, this is an SMP, so... There isn't someone else that could have just destroyed it. I think... And then, it hit me. In the last episode, I updated the map to remove these ugly, disgusting world borders. But to do that, I had to copy everything I built in the previous version of this map, and paste it onto the new one. And I did that, just not for this farm. <laughs> I know. A true genius. So, I need to rebuild it. Thankfully, it's not a big or expensive farm, but some of you are probably wondering a couple things. Like, Aspie, why does this farm have a killing chamber if you're farming clay? Or, Aspie, clay isn't a mob drop, so how does that work? Or, Aspie, I'm a long-lasting and loyal viewer to your channel, so why are you explaining this farm again? While it is true, I already explained it here, but I kinda wanna see if I can make explanations very interesting, considering that I have an idea how to properly edit these videos now. And besides, not many people have seen the video in the first place. <clears throat> Have you ever noticed how sometimes when you hit a zombie, you seem to get infested by them in a couple of seconds? Well, this mechanic is called zombie reinforcement. You see, when you hit a zombie in hard or hardcore difficulty, they have a chance to spawn an extra zombie around them. Regular zombies have a lower chance of spawning extra zombies compared to leader zombies. And no, I'm not inventing this by the way, look, right there, leader zombie. When you hit a zombie, the game will look around you for an area where it can spawn that zombie, meaning not around light sources and not on top of unspawnable blocks like slabs or path blocks. But Aspie, I hear you say. Why do you want zombies so badly? Don't you already have a mob farm? Drowns. In this data pack, certain things are different, and do tables of drown is one of them. Normally, drowns drop things like rotten flesh, copper, or nautilus shells, not clay balls. But in this map, they do. So the goal is to abuse that mechanic to get infant zombies, convert them into drowns, and collect every single one of their balls. Wait a second. The only thing I need to do is to bring a zombie to the farm. So first, I create an ugly dark box for mobs to spawn. Wait a bit, check if zombies spawn. We ask that no zombies spawn, close down the box, wait some more, get a zombie. Hey, a, a, a lot more than I anticipated. Wait a second, oh, I just realized. No, no, don't go outside. Oh, no, 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 this is wrong. I need to come back, come back, come back. Oh, no, oh, come, come, come. I, I, for, I forgot to wait for some- No, don't go into the lava, please! Um, I should do that during night time. Let's try that again. Get a zombie, pass him from the never, then pass him from the end, and put him in the farm. Remember that I need a weak sword? 
and now I need to hit the summer stand to inflict minimal damage to zombies. And I enchanted my solar sweeping edge. I'm not supposed to have that. The farm was finally working again. It was great. It should have been great. Wait a sec, I just realized, why can I not... Hold on a second. I... 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 What drops clay now, man? Drones don't drop clay balls anymore in the newer version of this data pack. So I wrote a message on their Discord asking, where the clay got? And apparently, you can get clay by straining mud of its water. So once again, I had to test it out in creative. Oh no, that's actually right. No, 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 no. How am I gonna automate this? I Can I even automate it? It's gonna take so much time. I need like thousands and thousands of clay. It's gonna take forever. This single change created so many f problems to make this build. The first problem being, how do I get dirt? Sorry, I should say, how do I get dirt without getting carpal tunnel from sitting at my computer right clicking all day? If you didn't know already, there is a way to craft dirt. For this, you need two pieces of gravel and two pieces of dirt. Combine it in a square shape and ta-da! You essentially converted the gravel into dirt. But there is a massive flaw with this method. It is very, extremely, boringly slow. I never mentioned it before, but when I revamped my entire island, this is the method I used to gather dirt. But trust me when I say this, collecting this much dirt using this method takes literal days. If I wanted to create this build before 2025, this method would simply not cut it. Ergo, I need an automatic farm. Does that even exist? I started looking inside of YouTube for some farm and stumbled upon this design. It works by turning stone into moss, then turning that moss into dirt by growing an azalea tree on top of it. It looked very promising, but after closer inspection, I concluded that this farm was too inefficient. Luckily for me, right after that, I got a recommended video from Shulkercraft, which is a channel that basically showcases and compiles every type of farm you can think of. And in that case, they showcased the dirt farm from this guy that uploaded it inside of Chinese YouTube. So thank god for China. The way this farm works, we build a stone generator, push the stone with piston next to the moss, bone meal that moss to turn the stone next to it into moss itself, then we grow a giant spruce tree, essentially turning that moss into puzzle, before finally breaking it down with TNT and collecting it. This sounds easy, but there's two problems with this farm. The first one, it is ridiculously expensive, and the second, I need coral fans. There is no coral in this world. I sat there for a few minutes and wondered, how are we going to do this? Well, if there is something that the clay incident taught me, is that if the item can be obtained in vanilla, then there is a craft for it. So once again, I scouted the discord and found that tropical fish give coral fans. The only problem is that I didn't know where any warm oceans were in this map, but maybe it wouldn't be a problem after all. Oh, and now that I think about it, I do need this. That's better. Now this place still looks like shit. Other than decorating, lush caves are pretty useful in this world. After all, it's another place where you can find tropical fishes, so making a water box here, inside the biome, should in theory grant us with some fishes. I created it and waited for a couple of minutes for fish to spawn, and after 10 minutes, there was still no fishes. So I checked the Minecraft with key for an explanation, and apparently they can only spawn in negative Y levels, meaning that we need to bring this box all the way down here. Annoying, but nothing that takes too long. A trip back to the mansion for materials, and apparently in this data pack, it doesn't even matter, cause when I came back with the materials, Materials. Fish. Yahoo! Yup. That is fishes well spent. With this done, the only thing I need to do is to gather some materials that I easily had access to or that I knew where to find. Starting with pack ties. I already had a couple of it in my chest with wandering traders or this useless drowned farm that was next to the cold river, but I still needed a decent bit more. And thankfully, this was not an issue. There was a huge pack ties tower next to this villager outpost. <laughs> I also needed honey blocks, which I should have had enough, but the machine here broke a long time ago, and I've never really bothered to fix it. Except that now, I ran through all my supply, so um, I need to fix it now. But I guess it gave me an excuse to change it. So first of all, I destroyed it, after almost destroying my life, and rebuilt it bigger and better than ever. All this just right next to my basalt generator. And when you need honey blocks, 
you also need slime blocks. Now with the farm I made a couple episodes back, it should not be a problem, except that it doesn't produce slime anymore. By switching the map, the slime chunks move to another position, but it's fine though, I have a pretty huge reserve of slime balls. It's more than enough for what I need. And the last thing I need are glazed terracotta, that I can just buy from mason villagers, and gold blocks. In reality, I don't need gold blocks, I could use any types of blocks, but the schematic is using them and, well, I can use them as well, so... Now I need the position to build this bad boy, and I thought that putting it right here would be decent. Okay, half the farm is complete, but I still need four Ravengers! What? Now, how am I possibly going to find four Ravengers? It's not like they spawn in the wild or something. Alright, oh, raids. To make sure they don't despawn, I bought four name tags. Okay, let's name these. What name should I give them? Hmm. And that's too common. There we go. And to avoid wrecking my village again, I decided to start the first raid in Emerald Plains. And this box I'm creating will be Bobby's temporary home. With that out of the way, it's time for me to pay a little visit to my troublemaking neighbors. I hope this is not going to break the build. I should be fine. Where are they though? Oh, they spawned on the roof. Okay, okay. Ooh. Ow, ow. Oh my god. Oh, yo. You guys do a lot of damage. Still no Ravagers. No, no, never mind. There is one. Okay, now I need this guy to go down with me. Come on. Be, be a nice boy. Where's my high truck? Okay, that was a bit too close and unnecessary. But at least I trapped him. And with this, we collected our first Bobby. I want to test something. Does me removing the beds they like, remove the raid or no? It does. This was great news. That meant that I could start a raid closer to my farm and reset it when needed. Now, time for me to repeat the process. And there's no one. The next day. <laughs> I wanted to start raid after raid, until I had enough ravengers to put inside all the chambers. With that being said, I still have a farm to finish.
Welcome, Dirtinator 5000, capable of gathering 48,000 blocks of dirt per hour, complex machinery, using the best of the best of globalization, and most importantly, it doesn't f work. Let's see. Ah, uh, okay, there's a problem. Why is it not working? I had to go through every layer of the machine to see what I could have possibly missed. I'm missing a torch here. That should be good, right? Oops. Yo, 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 yo. I was starting to get frustrated. The machine was still not work and I still had no clue why. So I, again, went around the machine to try to find what I was missing. But this time, I couldn't find what I was missing. And in times like these, desperation starts to settle in. I'll rebuild this farm. I, I, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna rebuild it. And I'm gonna use every single blocks they're using. Like, they're using crying obsidian. Sure, I'll use crying obsidian. They're using stone bricks. Sure, I'll use stone bricks. Maybe there's just some like properties with these blocks. I don't know. I'm gonna do every exact thing this machine is doing. I said that, but obviously I wasn't going to do it. Like this farm is already expensive and time consuming. So imagine if now I have to use crying obsidian. No thing. This time I used everything. No substitutes, everything. I went on to the schematic world where I took this, looked at everything inside the hoppers, inside the droppers, inside the dispensers. If this does not work, in any case, let's try this. Oh my God, it works. Uh, huh? I mean, I'm getting wood, I'm not getting dirt. There's no TNT here. Ah! Instead of making a dirt farm, I made an automatic tree farm. <laughs> the dirt creation was working, but the exploding chamber for it wasn't. I was beyond confused. I double checked every layer when building this to make sure I wouldn't forget anything and it was still not working. I even went on a copy of this world in spectator mode just to see if I have forgotten anything and I didn't! I even went on the schematic world, copy pasted it and studied it and nothing seemed to malfunction. It's like there was just some stupid random things in my world that prevented this machine from working. Wait a second. Oh my god! Why is so serious? It's something so stupid! You are telling me that what was preventing the TNT from exploding was the cobble platform that I used to build the machine? Yeah, like. Ha! Ah! Be me, need a lot of dirt, tries to build a dirt farm to save some time, and are wasting more time making this farm work than if I were to gather the dirt manually. It took three IRL days. But hey, now that I have infinite dirt, I can finally... Wait, why do I need dirt again? All oh, right, clay. Like I showed earlier, you can get clay by straining mud of its water. And you can get mud by splashing a dirt block with a... Whoa, whoa. Wait, shouldn't that just turn the mud into dirt again? Uh, never mind. I used the farm showcase by YouTube channel Jackson Wild to semi-automate the process. It's a very simple design. You put dirt on this piston, it pushes it next to the dispenser that's converted into mud, and then the mud gets pushed into this giant area with stalactites, straining it of its water. Very easy in concept, but the process was still very, very, very long. So I still had to wait for ages. So in reality, nothing changed. At least in between the waiting, I also went to gather another crucial material that I didn't have much of, packed mud. You just need one mud block and one wheat. So nothing more simple than to just create a simple wheat farm with all the bones I gathered from the mud farm. And... Right click. And for the mud, I can just use this farm that I created a...
a year ago? Oh my god. And I moved on here inside this fake mangrove swamp. And of course, like everything in this episode, it doesn't work. Of course, it just doesn't work. Of course. Why would it work? Uh, I forgot a torch here. The only issue is that it makes this ugly build even uglier. But at least it works and that's good enough for me. Now I should have every material necessary to build this project. So let's quickly recap all the common blocks that I will need. Oak wood, check. Brown concrete, check. Red sand. Check. Brown mushroom. Huh. Check. Brown terracotta, check. Wait. I have terracotta, but it's not brown. And the only way to get brown dye is with cocoa beans that you can only get by growing. And of course, this is on the table with yet another farm. <laughs> It's finally over. I have all the materials needed to build this project. The road was bumpy here and there, but what's important is the end result. <laughs> Get it? The end? I'm so fun. I forgot about that. The reason I didn't do it sooner was because I was missing coral fans to create TNT flying machines, but I got so horribly sidetracked by the dirt farm that I completely forgot about it. And because it's the first time I'm doing this, I have no clue how to build one of these. I swear I've done more rest on this video than I have in the past year of this channel's existence. And while normally it's not a problem because rest on tutorials are pretty well made, this time? I can never do something right, can I? I don't know if it was me looking in the wrong place or something, but I could not get a tutorial that was short and easy to follow. The closest thing I got was a tutorial from this guy. It would have been a perfect tutorial if he just specified one thing. This will need to be at the exact Y level that you made the first part. And then you just want to make sure that it's lined up exactly with the flying machine on either the X or Z coordinate. Now, when you hear this, what's the first thought that comes to your mind? Probably something like, which bug am I supposed to align it with? Right? Well, if that's the case, don't hope for an answer. This video doesn't give it to you. This led to me troubleshooting the machine in my test world to find out. Like, this took some time. I don't even know what happened here to make such a big hole. But let's just say that it took a couple of times to make it work. Once I finally found the problem, I went to the corner of the island and launched it to see if it worked correctly. Let's see if it works. And it did! And before storing the machines, I went ahead and removed the beacons and protected the spawn area since it has no obsidian platforms. With this, begin the destruction! to remove some bits here and there, but the end island was gone, meaning that now I can finally build. No, no, not doing that. See, usually this is the moment where I will do a time lapse and replay mod with music, but I'm not going to do that this time. And you know why? Because this build is a disaster. In the original game, this planet is sunny and welcoming. You almost want to be there. Now tell me, do you want to go to a place like this? You wouldn't. The sky is dark, the place is filled with creatures, and with my shaders, there is literal fog. It just gives a creepy atmosphere and misses the point on what it was going for by a landslide. And I only noticed it after finishing my build. And you know what? This opened my eyes on my world. I almost spent 3000 days doing multitudes of building machines in order to gather crazy amounts of resources. So much so that I basically acquired every item I could get in survival, but in Skyblock. And in the process, I forgot to tidy up things to make this island feel nice rather than just being a compilation of random builds. So to finally conquer Skyblock, my goal for next time is actually fixing my island of this mess and have something that I can actually be proud of. Because for me, this is not just an island, it's a piece of my mind, it's an expression of myself. 
stuff. A way to express to the world what I'm thinking. And you know what?